Hello and welcome to the first installment of the 2012 Larkin Golf Project. I am Erica Larkin and you are looking at the winner of the Larkin Golf Project raffle which is Eric Labass. So congratulations Eric and I met with him today. He is a great guy. I'm really looking forward to working with him over the next six weeks and 20 hours worth of instruction to get his game going. Uh, help him drop maybe about 10 strokes is going to be the goal. He is starting at a 25 handicap. I'm going to play through his swings for you that I took today on the range and on the course and talk you through what I'm thinking and how we're going to work together so you can kind of listen in on the process and uh, view his progress as we go along. So here we go. Um, here's his swing from down the line with the irons versus a driver. I noticed some really interesting differences in the way he swings the club on the downswing. Uh, similarities in the backswing uh, posture looks a little different because he's holding a longer club but overall in the downswing uh, the first major thing I noticed is he definitely chooses a different downswing with the driver than with the irons and he is a slicer of the ball with the driver in his hands uh, can hit a draw with an iron and when you take a look at, the, at this there's no wonder why um, on the downswing early with the driver the shaft gets out away from that swing plane line gets very steep and really coming into impact here you can see how the club head gets outside his hands um, he lags the club a lot better with the irons and he keeps his body more square longer with the irons he really opens up the chest and hips early as his hands fire with the driver and so these impact positions look pretty different um, I think that this causes him to really have a high left to right ball flight with the driver and it enables him with the irons to start the ball off a lot straighter. Uh, now I will say that when he comes through with the driver he has a tendency to block the club face more and keep it open. You can almost see the chicken wing and happen with the left elbow more so with the driver than the iron where he releases the club face better and more consistently. So there are definitely some differences, and um, as I watched him on the golf course, I will uh, show you how that actually uh, magnifies a little bit more. Okay, here is Eric's swing um, on the 13th hole at Stonewall on the tee box, and uh, he hit this ball in the fairway. He was aiming a little left and was trying to play his power fade, as he says, and uh, all well and good, and for as good as he hit this shot, you can really see how his weight stays back on his right foot through impact and he actually comes really undone and unstable with his footwork through the end of the swing. Um, I saw this on pretty much every tee shot when he played for me on the golf course today and uh, uh, on the original driver swing on the range he completed his weight shift properly every single time so if you combine uh, this hanging back on the, on the legs with the uh, pattern of movement that he he already had showed me you're definitely going to get a bigger left to right ball flight than anticipated and so that's what he's fighting out there on the course and I want to help him be able to transfer his iron swing to his driver to the golf course and that is going to be my project with Mr. Eric Labasse because he already knows how to do it uh, but he's got to get the right swing on the right club. Here is Eric's swing from the front uh, I think he, he has a nice movement. He has pretty good rhythm. Um, however, I feel like there's some breakdowns in his arms that cause him some inconsistency. So right here at the top of his swing, compared to uh, Hank Keeney, you can see the difference in the width of his arms, particularly the length of his left arm at the top of the swing. And so by correcting this, um, I believe that I can help him gain some consistency so that the downswing um, he has a better chance of connecting with the ball solidly and not the ground or not a thin shot and uh, that is going to happen um, by working on feeling um, hands pushing out away from his chest also working on increasing his lat length and flexibility uh, when I did a fitness screen on him today I found that he was a little bit limited in his lat length flexibility so we're going to do some exercises uh, to help him gain a little bit more mo mobility and flexibility in his shoulder and lats so that he can uh, perform a better reach at this part of the swing and then therefore on the way down he doesn't have to work so hard to straighten his arm out on time and by the time he gets to impact he can have more powerful 
consistent impact position instead of having that soft left arm which can easily hit a fat shot or a thin shot from there. Um, he does make it through with a pretty good weight transfer again on the range. He did fairly well at that so I know he has the potential to do it on the golf course if I can just um, help him with some transfer practice onto the course and get him to uh, I think utilize a good pre-shot routine and uh, some good swing thoughts to keep his focus on what the priorities are for his golf swing. So I think he's going to be on his way to really improving pretty quickly with his full swing and uh, I will also leave you with some other videos that we took on the golf course just to give you a feel of his game from what I could see and so that's up next. Okay here is Eric playing the uh, 12th hole. He hit this iron shot, pulled a little bit left ended up on the left side of the green in some in some uh, rough he was uh, able to punch out from here and get it a little bit closer to the green so not a bad out from that position here is uh, Eric's chip shot he chose a wedge, pitching wedge and open stance and he was a little short sighted uh, he was able to land this ball nicely on the green but it sort of rolled past and so I think that I can really help Eric with some of his decision making about club selection and technique on short game um, to make him uh, I think a little bit harder about his decision and trajectory and landing spot etc. Uh, Eric seemed to be a pretty good putter. I thought his distance control and his reading ability was right on. And that was a pretty nice putt there. And he finished this hole out pretty nicely. I uh, definitely thought that course management also may be an issue. This is the second shot on 13. He chose a fairway wood from the rough. He had kind of an uphill lie and about 210 uh, yards out from the green. And he was ready to go for it. And he hit this shot out pretty good landed up there on the right near one of the bunkers but uh, I believe that there may have been another decision there that probably would have been a safer play uh, because he did end up uh, chipping it uh, down on the next couple of shots I think it probably cost him a couple of strokes by making that decision here is uh, Eric's approach shot on 13. He chose to kind of bump and run a little 8 iron down there and uh, that lie kind of tricked him up so I think we'll be talking a little bit about uneven lie play as we go along. Here's Eric's second attempt out of the bunker. First one came down a little bit deep. This one he managed to get out pretty nicely. And uh, he made a nice two putt here to finish this hole. So uh, in summary, I'm really looking forward to working with Eric. I hope you follow along on uh, our journey together and his journey to improving his game. I really am looking forward to helping him overcome some of his transfer issues from driving range to golf course, helping him improve his swing sequence to get the club more on plane with his driver and uh, so that he can hit some straighter shots down the fairway and not have to place fade so much. Uh, I really think I can help his short game out and I'm um, looking forward to posting all this content for you to watch so keep in touch and look for the next installment in about a week for Walking Golf Project 2012. Thank you so much for watching.